Hey, how's it going? My name's Andrew from AA Homestead. Today we're going to show you how we made a predator-proof chicken coop and the run for them. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get into it. Before we go ahead and get inside the coop, uh, this is my lovely wife, Alicia. Hello. She's mainly on the channel. She does most of the videos. Uh, so before we go in there, I just wanted to show you, this is just a moisture barrier. Uh, it does bother me that the top is upside down and the bottom is right side up, but I wasn't about to take it down over that. Just like your house, it's important to put a moisture barrier up on anything. Uh, one of the worst things for chickens in the winter up here in Michigan, cold temps and moisture inside the coop. Uh, we do still have to get the sides put up. Our goal is going to be probably a red, I think we decided yeah, on. Yeah, I think we're going for more of a red. Yeah, and we could probably raise the camera and show you the roof. It's a green color. We do got to finish a few things on the outside, but let's go ahead and get inside the coop. As you can see, we are inside the coop now, and I'm going to give you the grand tour of what we have inside. We have our nesting boxes here, and as you can see, we have one of our lovely ladies trying to lay an egg, so we're not going to bother her too much. But we added more nesting boxes in here because we added more hens, and we just needed more space for them to be able to lay their eggs. And Andrew did do a short on how he made these nesting boxes, so go check that out. So Alicia just made a comment saying she feels like a kid showing off her treehouse that her dad built, and it's basically, yeah, it's like a treehouse. But so the nesting boxes, obviously, they're on the ground. Uh, the hens prefer these ones over this. I'm surprised she's sitting up there right now. I am going to make three more boxes, well, one box, depending on what you want to call this, and put it up here, secure it, and there will be a roost bar that comes out, uh, or whatever else you want to call that. It's just going to stick out a little bit, and there goes the door. I don't have anything to hold it open. It's windy out today. So that's going to be the next thing on the list, and then let's go ahead and show you how we built uh, the roost. First thing is we got a little ladder. It helps them out. Um, they don't always use it, but for the most part, they actually do climb up and then they spread out here. Uh, most of them obviously are up high. They prefer to be higher than lower, but we do have some that hang out mainly on this side. I don't know why they don't like this side. So I'm thinking about making another one that's this tall that runs over there and maybe slightly this way. Um, you could see what I did here was I just put some two by fours up against you know, other two by four and then my corner four by four post. And then that's how I've connected these roost bars. So Alicia and I could sit on one of these two by fours and it's not coming apart. There's three screws holding each end in place. So the next thing that I decided to do was I put, I don't know if you can hear Grooster out there, but oh, somebody wanted in the nesting box and now you're gonna be upset. She's gonna make noise. Oh, yep, here we go. Well, don't let her. That's your box. <laughs> you tell him. Well, you gotta go back in your box. Go oh, come here. It's okay. All right, well, not interested. Oh, flapping around. Uh-oh, did you get dust in your eye? I don't know, something. It's fine. Anyways, all right, back to this. So, what we did was we put a mesh. This is just hardware cloth. It's the same thing that we have on the outside of the run that you saw in the beginning. And the idea behind it is a lot more of their poop's going to go down and go below here where we have wood chips. Uh, of course, anything that's kind of solid doesn't really fall through. And then it is easy to clean it up as well. So you're probably wondering, well, that's going to cause a lot of a draft in the winter. And you are absolutely right. The solution is to put down some pine shavings over top of that. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now because I just cleaned this out. I think she's happy now. She finally got her nesting box back after all of that drama. Hopefully she, I don't know if she's actually trying to lay an egg or she just likes the box in general. I think she's trying. So real quick before I put the pine shavings down, I wanted to explain what I would probably do different in this case. So I put the hardware cloth down on the frame. So I built the base just like I assume you would do most anything. And then I stapled it to the top of the boards using, uh, they're galvanized, they're pretty thick. I think they're called fence staples. And then I went and I started to build my walls on top of it. So I really don't have any way to remove that. 
So what I would do is I think it's called uh, cage wire. They're about, I don't know, about that big, the squares are. So it's not a great reference for you, but I would probably put that down first and then I would make removable hardware cloth on like a two by two, let's say. That way I could take them out in three, four sections and pull them up through here. And then you could take them over there and just power wash them off. And then that would be so much easier. That's what I would do different, that uh, cage wire, and then build the removable panels with hardware cloth, put them down. So this is just the pine shavings from Tractor Supply. It's the same stuff we used when they were chicks. So to solve our draft issue in the winter, or just, uh, yeah, get rid of this airflow. These pine shavings do just fine. And then, of course, you can simply pick up the pine shavings during the winter months. In the summer, we're able to control the amount of draft that comes in here. And we get to control all of that based on the amount of pine shavings that we were to put down. If you want to put none, you can also put none. There's an alternative solution to doing this as well, which would be when we go outside, I can show you the base of the coop and how that's all in there. But let me go ahead and get the rest of this in here and then we'll move on. So I know this is quite a bit of detail on the inside of the coop, but one other thing is I made this here so that it was a wall to separate where they roost and then the rest of the coop. So that way when it comes time to clean, we're not cleaning this out all the time. They are barely here. They are usually there or outside, as you probably know if you own chickens. If you don't, maybe that's why you're watching this video. So this has worked great for us, especially when it comes to cleaning, because I can take my snow shovel, jam it right up against here, get all these pine shavings and get them out of here. Now, these pine shavings, I'll likely just scatter around the coop or, or the run, excuse me. Uh, you will see in a minute. Uh, these ones, for the most part, we'll just bring them over to our compost. Oh, what's going on here? Fighting for a box. Oh, you the boss? Anyways, yeah, so <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. She's so mad. Yeah. This one's here. We'll usually put them in the compost for the most part. Uh, when there's not a ton of poop mixed in with it, we can scatter it around the run as well and they'll help turn that into good compost for next year. As I had mentioned earlier, one of the worst things for chickens is moisture. So these cutouts, I got all this, this roof panels. These are from my job and so those squares were already in there. So you could see we have two big squares cut out and then also some of it wasn't perfect. So we have also some openings along the edges. And that's going to allow just that ventilation go up and out. And then we got our door. Again, I got a lot of this stuff from work, which is really nice. And we just have these little cheap latches on here. And it works really good. This is our Harris Farm chicken coop door. This is an automatic door. And we really kind of were trying to figure out what would work best for us because uh, our jobs were just not here in that time to open this door for them to be able to come out. So we thought it would be best to have an automatic door and has worked really well for us. We've had this door since June and we've only had to replace the battery two times, which we think is pretty good. I don't know if all automatic chip chicken coop doors uh, do this, but this one, you can set it two different ways. You can set it for the daylight, so when it gets bright enough, this door will open by itself, or you can set it on a timer for whatever time you want this door to open. Yeah, this chip and coop door works pretty good. What we did for the run was the same post that we did for the chicken coop. These are just four by four treated posts, ground contact ones. Every I want to say it's eight feet, give or take, maybe it's seven. We have another post. And so what we did was we took the four foot wide hardware cloth. This is seven feet tall. And then we stapled it to the outside there. 
We stapled it to the outside there. It goes down to the ground and then it also goes a foot out and then we covered it with soil. And we did that all the way down there. Uh, we did not do that on the back simply because the goal is to remove the back wall in the spring to get all of this, what will turn into beautiful compost out by the time we get to the spring. So why do we choose hardware cloth? Why not, uh, what is that, the poultry Chicken netting? wire, yeah. yeah. Chicken wire, yeah. Why not use that? Well, chicken wire is only designed to keep chickens in. It's not designed to keep a raccoon, a fox out. Uh, and a raccoon and a fox, they'll tear right through your, your chicken wire and they'll get right to these chickens. So don't do the chicken wire. Now, some people argue that maybe even the hardware cloth isn't enough and maybe, maybe they're right in some cases, but this is, uh, I think it's 19 gauge. So when you get the quarter inch hardware cloth, I think it's 23 gauge. And then this is half inch, so 19 gauge. So it's not super thick, but it's a pretty strong fence. And it's keeping, we have a fox that comes in every single night. It is right in here. And I guarantee you, he's tried to get in here. We also have raccoons. I have trail cam pictures of just outside the fence. Uh, I don't have the trail cam out watching the coop right now because it's hunting season. But this thing, I guarantee you, has had predators try to get in and they have not. I will get a camera set up to watch it at all times here pretty soon most likely after hunting season's over. The reason why we built this chicken run is because we have a lot of predators on our property like Andrew had talked about. We have foxes, raccoons, all kinds of things that would really want to get to these chickens. And we decided it would be in these chickens' best interest to build a chicken run instead of letting them free range and um, have a really good life in here. I mean, as you can see, this is a very decent sized chicken run and we even expanded this year because we added more hens. And I think they have, if not triple the space here and Andrew can get in the specifics of About that. About 400 square feet, I think, or is, 440, somewhere in there. Yeah. And yeah, the typical chicken, they want eight square feet per bird and we are over double that. Yeah, so I mean, they have a really good life in here and they seem to really enjoy it. So if you are going to build something like this, I would recommend that you use some sort of bracing that you can put up, take down, uh, while you lay down your fencing. Because the problem with having it spread out so far was I was having it bow in too much or it would go up. That's why the, the sides look so much better than the roof because I had made something to put in place so that way the fencing wouldn't bow in or go out. It was stuck against that temporary brace. So when I pulled it down after it was stapled, it's mainly flat all the way down. It looks really nice. I hate the way the roof looks, uh, but that's why I have all these braces in place now. Um, you can see over here, we got some leaves. And when the leaves are coming down, they're obviously bowing this out. That's a big space for this chintzy hardware cloth. I say chintzy, but it's the reality is it's not structurally sound to hold something. And the amount of weight that would come down with the snow load would probably be too much at some point, depending on how much holds, especially if you have leaves acting as like a barrier for that snow not to be able to come through. So definitely make sure you do something like this. I use two by twos. Uh, this is 10 foot wide. I got one, two, three. So, you know, it's two and a half, five, seven and a half, ten. So every two and a half feet, give or take, you have a two by two adding to the structure. So when we say predator proof, we are talking because every single gap is filled. So you can see here, like a, I think it's a weasel that can get in inch hole, inch square hole. Find me an inch square hole. There is not one. Every bit of this run is sealed up. I mean, of course, little things could probably get in but nothing that can hurt these chickens. We got this, that's kind of holding that one. Uh, this is just another block for this, for my nice little door strap here. Works great. And then this goes all the way down. And then same thing, we got more wood right down there in that corner, filling another gap. So same thing as the other far corner, but down here, this post is a little farther out. So I have an entire two by four going up. You can see, uh, our lovely chickens carved that pumpkin. I think I gave it to them yesterday. Um, unfortunately, they carved out here, but it, it did look better. And then on the outside here, these are our uh, ground cover rolls. They're six foot long. They are super heavy. And then of course our ladder. 
And that's what's holding down this instead of the soil that we have going all along the side of the main portion. So that way when we want to take this back off, we just roll them out. We lock these chickens in the coop. We don't let them out in the morning. We get out here when the sun comes up. Hopefully within, if we work hard at it, two, three hours, we can have all of this out. And brand new wood chips brought in. If you're curious about that, that's the deep litter method. I'm not going to go too in depth on that. There's tons of videos out there and I strongly encourage you decide what's best for you and what's best for your chickens. We have all of, it's basically our feeding station down here. And the reason why we have it under here is because we are keeping these out of the elements. There is not a roof on here. So to keep them out of the rain and to keep them dry, this is why we keep them under here. We have got our crumble, we have our grit, and then we have our pellets here. Yep, so there's the crumble. They really like that, the grit. And as she said, there's the pellets. I want to show you the underside of the roof. You can see that is actually the quarter inch hardware cloth. And I have that overhang all the way around the coop. And so I did that for maximum ventilation. You can see on the back how much it overhangs. And then there is our roof. Hopefully you're able to see it okay. So we plan to put kind of the same thing on the outside. So before we go, I just wanted to mention the underneath the coop. So it's the same thing. That's the uh, half inch hardware cloth. And then this opened up all that space underneath the coop. So this is an eight by eight coop. So you got 64 square feet. So we added 64 square feet just doing this. Now, if we would have just started the run outside, that's a lot of square footage you're missing. And for the amount of money that it costs to add this, the return on investment made so much sense to just close in the coop. One big thing about doing this was it's shelter from the elements. So anytime it is pouring rain out, they all just huddle up under here. And a lot of times they'll hang out under here. Uh, they do favor the other side of the run, especially on a cloudy day or um, I suppose in the summer, that's where most of the sun hits. It's pretty shaded for the most part throughout the day. So they do end up in that one corner and we never figured out like, why are they just in that corner? But one day I saw, saw the reason it was the sun coming in. So great for shelter. And we could take straw bales on the outside if we wanted to, which was another solution to eliminating some of those pine shavings to prevent that draft from coming in. So one thing that was really hard for me on this build, I still got to cut this off, but that's uh, kind of securing the top to prevent the predators from getting in where the wall meets the top fencing. But this door is at an angle. So you could see here, if I were to come out, it would have to go, the corner would have to go here, but I didn't really want to deal with buying an extra post for 18 bucks. So I decided to just make myself a square frame, put it in there, and then I screwed everything in kind of at an angle, well, cause you have to, and it's worked really well. I just have the cheap latches on here. I would like to change these to a better one. Now the one up here works great. Down here, you kind of got to put your foot in to get it to go, but it still works pretty well. And then this was all done. I had all these extra pieces of scrap wood sitting around. Um, I could probably add a few more staples. It looks like I just had the regular staples there, but I just tried to brace it up with all the scrap wood that I had. It, I don't know, I was kind of freestyling it, if you will, as I was building it, trying to make it as secure as possible so that it wouldn't sag. And I don't know, I think it looks pretty cool. So if, even if it doesn't work, I guess it looks good. You might be wondering, well, how much did they invest into this? And I'll tell you, it was well over a grand. <laughs> Initially, I was like, oh, we'll be able to build it for 300. Well, 300 every fourth or every five trips I made to Menards was like 300. So. Yeah, it, it was expensive, but you could buy just the coop itself from somebody for what, 800 or 1200? Very expensive. We looked into coops to see, to comparable to what we could get, to what we could build and building between costs from buying a coop to what we could actually build, it was a lot cheaper. And we got everything that we wanted out of it. 
Now, I'm not a builder of any sorts. I just, I started this coop build knowing how I was gonna build the floor. I had, I literally only had it I designed up to this tall. Past that, I had no clue until I started building and that's why I made like four trips to Menards because it changed every three hours, something was different. And I said, oh, I gotta go back to the store now. But we're really happy with how it turned out. And even though we were kind of going with the flow, Andrew did such a good job in building this coop and it looks really good. And I'm so excited for these girls and gentlemen to have this coop to hang out in. Yep, and if you guys have any questions about it, uh, or if you have any advice, you see something that's not right, uh, personally, I feel like we did a pretty good job. It's not perfect by any means, so that's what I'm saying. If you see something that's wrong, please let us know. We're not gonna be offended whatsoever. And just, uh, if, if you want more detail, let me know. I, obviously, this didn't go into the details of the guts of the coop, so if you wanna know exactly what I used, I could probably even figure out every piece of lumber that's on here. Um, I, that's probably take me quite a while, but I'll do it. I wanna thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. We enjoyed bringing you along inside the coop and our run and showing off our chickens. And uh, if you learned anything from this video, go ahead, hit that like, subscribe, and share button. We always appreciate that. Yep, thanks for watching, take care.